Why hello there, ladies and gentlemen, viewers on the tubes of you. Welcome back to another video, doing another replay analysis here today. Before we get started, if you want to get yourself a replay analysis to help improve your gameplay, push to the next rank, break through a plateau in Rocket League, whatever, whatever reason you would want to get analysis, check out the description down below for all the information on how to do so. Now let's get into the analysis for Jamie, or whose in-game name is Tower of Door? Door? Or I'm not sure which one it is, but Jamie says they're picking up the game again after hitting Grand Champ one and a half years ago. GC2 one and a half years ago. They're currently sitting in 1230 slash 1240, both solo queuing and with a friend. We weren't really playing or they weren't really playing well, but they feel like this represents most of his habits. Right now, he's focusing on speed and boost management, which I hope is the right call because I feel like there's a lot more chasing compared to one and a half years ago, and I'm having a hard time adapting to the play style. It is true, um, especially if you're playing, did you say twos? Did you say what game mode it is? I think it's twos. Didn't say, but I have it open, and I believe it was 2v2. Uh, TV2 is definitely more ball chasey than it was one and a half years ago, mainly because the meta for 2v2 has become pretty much just let each player one take turns 1v2ing the other team. And if the person who is attempting to 1v2 creates a scoring opportunity, then the second person takes it. So with that second man always playing a pretty passive defensive role, waiting for their opportunity to is pretty much score on open net uh that gives the first man a lot of freedom to be very aggressive and very uh fast paced with their challenges and with their plays and whatnot so yeah that's kind of why 2v2 is like that now back in the day people used to play for passes a little bit more uh and and whatnot like that let's go ahead and hop into this analysis now Okay, going for the solo play right off the bat. Almost. Could have put that on target, but good attempt. What rank did you say this is? This is going to be around 1230 to 1240, you said. So that would put, I think, in 2v2. Um, I'm not sure what that is. I don't think you said. Mm, sorry for not knowing, but I'm going to assume that that's a about champ three, maybe low champ three, something like that. All right, I need to back up a little bit. I got a little distracted. Back to about this point here. So, okay, big mistake right here. We got 80 boosts. There's no reason we need to go all the way back to our corner here. Never mind. I take that back. That was a replay bug. You have zero boost. It showed 80. You all saw it. I'm not crazy. This can still be pointed out though. See, there's a replay bug. You don't have 80 boosts here, you have zero. So what I can still say is your teammate here is keeping this ball on offense. And if you, I almost wanna say this is sort of where you get to decide how you wanna play. And this can change moment to moment in the game depending on what your team needs from you in order to be successful. You got to be adaptable in Rocket League. In certain moments of the game, certain score lines, certain play styles will call for you to have to play a different way. But you're going all the way back for your boost here when your teammate is maintaining offense. Your teammate is keeping this in your opponent's half. So that is an opportunity for you to maintain your offensive pressure and stay on offense by rotating at half at midfield instead of all the way back to your end right so s rotate back towards midfield as though you were rotating back to your corner midfield becomes the new your corner so instead of going all the way back you can stay up grab pads and stay in the play in order to maintain offense here since you are on offense right now now again Sometimes you do need to play back further. Maybe you're getting killed by long shots or they're just hard clearing it to your end constantly over your heads. 
that might be a time where you need to start going all the way back on your rotations, play back further, and get ready for those long shots or those hard clears. But this was definitely an opportunity where you could have swung back towards midfield, collect some pads as this play is developing, and you can actually be on this ball right now. Right? You could be on this ball. Maybe you were able to catch it, bring it up the, the wall, grabbing this 100 boost, and you could be making a solo play right now. A little bit of a... Go back one more time. So I'm fine with you grabbing this boost. I am tempted to say that I... Yeah, I'm going to definitely say that I would... You're rotating... Back post, but really you're not. Like, I always advocate rotating back post. Rotating away from the play. Which, in your mind, you are, right? In your mind, you think you're... But this is where Rocket League is situational. So you're rotating back post, which normally is the right call. You're avoiding rotating into the play or under the ball. Which, again, normally is the right call. Because you don't want to crowd the same area as your teammate. You want to be able to have layered defense. So once your teammate goes, you're able to follow them up. Get a free ball or follow up whatever happens. A 50-50, whatever. But the thing is here, you see this play develop where he is making an aerial play. Which is going to bring him up in this area. And your teammate would not be able to challenge this. Facing the direction he is right now, if that makes sense. Right? He can't challenge the way he's facing right now if he makes an aerial play. So what's going to happen is your teammate is going to have to turn this way before he's able to challenge because this guy's not going to be close enough to the wall for him to challenge like from the corner or from the sidewall because the play is going to be out here so your teammate is going to have to turn this way and jump to aerial or defend it from the backboard and then go from the backboard or wait for him to bring the ball closer from the backboard or i guess another way you could think of it is you want to be rotating behind your teammate who has to who has to defend this play in this direction and also another way i guess an easier way that i could have said this to not confuse you yeah this i had to stop and think about this for a second make sure i was saying the correct thing so what i said earlier is completely true completely correct i think the biggest thing there is that you're just not putting yourself in a good position to deal with an outcome of a challenge from your teammate or if your teammate gets beat. I think the easiest way I could probably say this is that you are putting yourself perpendicular to the play. Like this, right? You see how this occurred here? You are not in a good position to do anything to follow up this play. Had you been rotating here, you are in a good position to deal with this. You can easily, if it gets past your teammate, you can easily save this to your corner and collect the ball. Or if there's a 50-50, you're in a good position to go for it no matter where it goes. But the way you are now, the only thing you could possibly be ready for is if a 50-50 shoots out this direction. You are in an awkward position for anything that comes at you overhead and obviously you have to do like a full three or 180 to go this direction in any way so i think the biggest thing is that you're putting yourself in a position where you are perpendicular to the play you're facing the wrong way and if your teammate had been able to challenge this head-on this would be the correct positioning 
but because your teammate had to challenge in this direction and the goal is to be rotating behind our teammate, behind the direction our teammate is facing, is challenging from, we should have been rotating back in this direction. Again, recognizing that because this play is developing into an aerial play that is occurring up here, our teammate's not going to be able to challenge any, any which way in this direction. We should have seen that and had the game sense to, to realize, okay, he's going to have to challenge in this direction or go up the backboard and make a play off the backboard. So that was pretty hard to explain. But right there, that's when you, right before you flip, that's when you can see. Boom, he's slowing down. He's about to make an aerial play. Rotate to the corner, which is normally in 2v2. This is where 2v2 is a lot different than 3v3. In 3v3, you'll almost always have somebody ready to challenge us head on. And you can always just rotate back, back post, right? You can always just rotate around like you are now. However, your rotation is a bit sharp anyways, right? If you're rotating back post, ideally you want to swing a bit wider so we have a better angle and, and field of view on the play and everything. I'm going to stop rambling there. I think I've rambled long enough on that one. Should have a good idea. What is this? A mechanical error, obviously. Not sure what we were going for there. That was a bit of a oopsies moment. Unfortunately, concedes the goal, but that's definitely on you for having a free, 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 free ball and just doing whatever that was. Not sure what happened. Here we go. There's the, there's the setup we want. So I don't really point out a lot of mechanical stuff. I try to point out game sense stuff mainly because that's stuff that you can instantly utilize in your games. And mechanics, you just have to refine mechanics as you go. Yeah, here you really just want to make sure that your car is facing the direction that you're going to be using your flip, right? Or else this is going to happen every time. <clears throat> Notice how you got the reset not facing the direction that you would have wanted to utilize your flip in right so we are getting the reset and we're not facing the net so when we use our front flip we're not going to hit the ball because a front flip is not the right direction right we're facing this way so a front flip is gonna attempt to hit the ball in this direction had your car been facing this way a front flip would have worked And obviously, in, in hindsight, when you see that, you could say, okay, next time that happens, I'll use a side flip or I'll use a diagonal flip, which you would probably make better contact on the ball here if you did. However, that's not as threatening because you're not really getting the scoop that you get with a front flip at that point, but it could still work. But that's the main thing that went wrong here is that your car wasn't facing the direction that you were going to use your flip when you got the reset. And um, also the ball was just kind of moving very quickly away from you when you went for that reset you didn't have much boost to try to catch up with the ball not a great setup to go for a reset you'll again learn that as you go for it fail it more and more you'll learn how to execute it better Okay, I don't like that. I don't like going for this ball here. I'm trying to be a little bit more... Um, What's the word? A little bit more nitpicky on these analysis lately because I feel like a lot of the time I sort of 
hit on the same main points. So I'm trying to be a little bit more in depth on what I'm trying to really put myself in your shoes and like what I would do in these positions. I don't like this touch here because they've just got somebody back waiting for you to make your play and give them the ball. So this touch here, unless you're able to make this something that you can follow up on, all you're doing is handing possession back to this player. So either you need to be making a touch on this ball that you can follow up. So get a touch up in this direction, a lofty touch that you can land on the wall and follow it up or threaten following it up and then follow the ball on the ground make a 1v1 play if he gives you the space less good decision you can go for this and just hit it really hard really far that way you're buying time uh before this player can really do anything with the ball i don't like that option as much personally i don't even think i would have gone for this ball let me watch this back again boom i might have gone for that ball but again, really focusing on making a touch that we are going to be able to get to first at Shaw in the back there. Yeah, I may have very well just turned around and caught this ball in my corner and either taken a 50-50 with Mitty or tried to fake him out. Because if you take this ball back to your corner, right? Say you hypothetically did not go for this. Ball looks like it's going to land about here. We catch it. Kind of straddle it here and say he comes to challenge us okay what what's really gonna happen if we are sitting right here right behind the ball as he comes to challenge us here nothing really there's no threat there's no danger and our teammates rotating behind us at that point they'll have the next touch they get a free ball so either we could make the play for offense straight away like we did but we need to be getting a higher touch on the ball landing on the wall and following it up or we can play a more passive approach. Let the ball come down to the ground, catch it, stay behind it, take a low 50. See what happens from there. But taking a low 50 in this position, especially with him being all the way back still, nothing bad is ever going to happen. You're only giving yourself the opportunity to come out on top there. If you're somebody who likes to play more passively, low 50s are your best friend. Low 50s are about one of the best things you can do against very aggressive play styles. Just, just be undispossessable. I don't know what the right word there was, but just be very hard to dispossess by never giving up the ball for free. Okay, let's see this. So good job helping your teammate out there. Good save. But yeah, obviously, a lot of this is hard to say whether it's decision making or it's mis-execution. Because you have said that you've been GC2 before. But here, off of game sound. And just knowing in 2v2, in 2v2, 90% of the time, the person who's rotating back from your end to play defense, the person who's rotating back is going to try to demo you 90% of the time. So with game sound, hearing that he's accelerating towards you and just knowing 2v2 and knowing that the person behind you is going to try to demo you 90% of the time, we need to make this play faster to avoid being demoed. First of all, would have been ideal to probably hit this over your corner boost instead of away from your corner boost. And then we could make an aerial play off the wall. Your, your aerial mechanics have looked pretty solid. I think you'd be pretty comfortable making an aerial play off the wall here. Or you don't have to. You can collect the boost and still bring it back down to the ground. But ideally, we do want to be giving ourselves that 100 boost, denying it from the opponent. But after the fact, after that little mishap, again, hearing him coming knowing he's going to try to demo us, I would have liked to seen you catch this on the front side of your hood, right? Don't put it on the ground where you now lose your speed on the ball and now you kind of have to cut it towards midfield. 
because it's not on the top of your hood anymore. I want to see you catch this on the front side of your hood as far forward on your car as you can without it falling off of your hood so that you can maintain all of the speed that you have and that the ball has so that you can take advantage of this 1v1 while you have it because you're not going to have it for long. And especially if you slow down at all, he's going to have time to dispossess you or make your life a lot harder. So yeah, you got to catch this on the front side of your hood. Maintain your speed with the ball and take this 1v1. That's another thing with trying to play more passive. You need to take your chances when you have them. This is a chance, but only if you play it fast. Playing passive means you're not going to have as many scoring opportunities, so you need to make each one count. A little unfortunate there. It was an interesting half flip. It looked like you backwards flip canceled and then held a directional air roll. Is that how you just did this half flip? You flip cancel backwards? Maybe you're just used, to, maybe you're an air roll rider or you are left handed or something. I don't know. That just looked uh, weird. And also, I usually do my half flips back and to the left is what I'm more comfortable with. Everyone has a more comfortable with flip direction, half flip direction, front flip, you know, diagonal flip. Everybody's more comfortable, just like in basketball. Everybody's more comfortable with one hand than the other. Same thing in Rock League, which I think is pretty cool. Little nuance there. Um, but yeah, that was just looked a little weird to me. It might only just be because I'm used to doing my half flips back in the other direction. But I will say i'm just gonna put it out there i have a half flip tutorial a fast half flip tutorial the perfect half flip like how to do the the most optimal half flip the fastest half flip that the pros use that all the pros use I have a tutorial for it art will be on screen check it out if you need a half flip tutorial Ooh, nice shot. That's where you're flexing your previous peak self on them. You know, these guys aren't used to somebody having that in the bag. Yeah, that's a pretty bad touch by our teammate, but we're good. Good job. That was an example of what I was talking about earlier, how... Rotating to back post here wouldn't make sense, right? Your teammate is challenging the ball going from left to right. And so you're positioning behind your teammate this way. Oh no, what's going on? That's sort of a bad habit, right? I am fine with you going for this boost because here there should be enough time, right? There should be enough time to where you have time to go out and grab this boost. However, once it's not there, is there any signal to tell us that this boost isn't going to be there? Okay, there is. We just saw Midi get it. Has been a decent amount of time since it went. Yeah, it, it's close. But once it's not there, you can't wait on it. 
That's a pretty bad habit. You ugh, almost never want to wait on a boost. The only time I'll ever wait for a boost to come up is like, I don't play twos very much. I'm more of a 3v3 guy. So it's a bit more obvious when you've got a lot of time. Yeah, I just, I'm just going to say don't ever wait on a boost. If it doesn't come up, just start moving. Keep your, keep your momentum and start picking up pads. It's never a good idea to wait on a boost. In 2v2 especially. In 3v3, if you only have to wait an extra half a second, in 3v3 it's not always the biggest deal because you have three players on the field instead of two. But when you only have two people, every moment counts a bit more. Nice. One goal game. Ice scoring affair. Halfway through regulation. Okay, how do you play this? Okay, I like it. Okay. Oh. You gotta do a little bit better of a job noticing what's going on here i instantly noticed that you should not be going for this boost like because you see your teammate before you decide to go for this boost you see your teammate hit the ball away from himself into the possession of the other player All right the other player did not commit for this ball boom look at they turn away and then your teammate hits the ball towards them so you know they're gonna have a touch coming back your way bad time to go for this midfield boost and i'm i'm pretty sure your back corner boost would be up anyways in this position instead nobody's taken it since kickoff so boom he gave away the ball opponent was facing the ball so they have an instant play going back to your end you should be turning back for your corner boost not the midfield boost here again just gotta do a little bit better job of noticing what's going on oh my god what in your mind made you think you had a play on this ball that was a terrible commit okay so your mechanics are looking like your aerial mechanics i'm seeing the flashes of gc2 in you like you said for sure but i'm also seeing like you said some bad habits you got some bad dive jumping for this ball at all that's a terrible idea. You're so far away. You have no chance of doing anything. Your only thing that you could possibly be doing here is assuming he's making like a an aerial setup play. Like he's going to follow up this ball. He's going to pop it up and go for an air dribble or go for a flip reset. And you're trying to bump him on his takeoff, right? That's maybe what you're trying to do here. But it's unnecessary. Just rotate back. Follow up your teammate's challenge. Almost always the better play. And when you're this far away... That was a really bad call. That was a really, you're super far away. Really bad call to try to jump for this. Now you're out of the play for what's been an extra four seconds, probably. Yeah, like, like you said, boost management has been a sort of an issue. You did point out that you're trying to work on that. If you know you're going to be going up field here, and you also know your opponent's rotating back, but you're, you're rotating back first, like you're beating them to this mid boost. You could be, like he just landed maybe, and he just made an aerial play. So he's low boost, landing back behind you, you're you're beating him to this mid boost that flip there should have been immediately towards the midfield boost you should be starving your opponent here of this midfield boost and you should have 100 boost facing the play while your opponent has nothing rotating back so that was a little bit of lapse in judgment there you should have 100 right now facing the play and he should have zero and you would be probably on this ball
It's just some things are not clicking right now for sure. Honestly, I've pointed out a decent amount so far. And a lot of it has been stuff that I don't usually say on these analysis. So I like that. This is good. Um, but honestly, like, I'm going to have to rewatch this recording afterwards so I can give you a good summary of what you need to work on at the end. That was a bit of a sketchy situation, obviously. That's tough. Because if you turn on your ball cam here, it's going to be... I understand why you didn't turn on your ball cam and look where the ball was. By not looking, you thought this ball was a lot closer to the ground than it was. But if you turn on your ball cam and look, it's also going to be very hard to go up for this in aerial for it because it's straight overhead. Plus, you are doing a good enough job that if the ball was low enough for him to immediately shoot, you are covering that. So I, I don't fault you. This might look bad, him not turning on his ball cam here, but he had all shooting angles covered. And if he would have turned on his ball cam here, it would have been pretty ugly. One, he would lose vision of Shaw in the first place to know sort of if he was up and if he was going for a shot. And two, it would have probably made the aerial harder because he'd be looking straight up at the ball. Now, I don't know if I'm just talking out of my ass. Some, like, I don't think so. I don't like to toot my own horn, but I've been playing this game for a long time. And I think I finally, I, like, I'm at that point where, like, I feel pretty, I, I feel pretty good at the game. I've been playing a, a, a lot of hours lately. Not a lot of hours, but more than I usually do. So maybe that's why I'm noticing small things like this. But personally, I would see this again. Just noticing, it's again, being a little bit better at noticing things. Your teammate is still mid-flip. This guy is facing the play. Or dang near. This guy's going to get to the ball. If your teammates, either your teammate can't go for this, isn't going to go for this. Or he is, and by the time he goes for it, right, the ball's... Let me, let me try to do this as accurately as possible, right? The ball would be here. Your teammate would be finishing their flip around here. This guy would be challenging here. That only leaves the direction that it ends up going to occur once the 50-50 happens. So again, it's just small things like this. If you are... You didn't, again, say what rank this was. Specifically, I don't know off the top of my head what rank 1230 is, but it's pretty up there. And being more aware like this, reading 50-50s, reading the trajectory the ball will, will most likely go, noticing if the opponent is facing the play or if they're not, so you know if they're able to challenge or not. These are things that I think you've been lacking a little bit. Keeping an eye on your opponent, keeping an eye on the play, and noticing these small things that are relative and important for reaching GC or reaching GC2 again like you want to. So here this happens as soon as you see this position I would be turning back to the net but you sort of hesitate right you don't instantly turn and it just puts you in a slightly less than ideal position. It's a slight hesitation here. Nice demo. Good attempt at a pass. Good 
good attempt on a touch that you can follow up. All right, what do we do with this? See, that was more of the touch we needed earlier. That was a pretty decent touch. It could have been a little better. Definitely could have been a little bit better. It's not bad. It's kind of like, what play do you want to make? Do you want to make the the fast ground play because here you have to go for the ball from the ground because you're hitting it so hard off of the wall that you <clears throat> can't really follow it from the wall see how far away it got from the wall by the time you landed there and you only have 23 boots you can't really make a, a wall play here so you have to play this off the ground so that's like one of two plays your other play again just like earlier Make a slightly softer, slightly loftier touch and make the aerial play. It's a preference. Can't say that you made the wrong choice here or anything like that. for the pre-flip touch, huh? 30 seconds left, and need a goal. I think I don't like about this is again, <laughs> awareness. Awareness has been your biggest issue for sure. And it kind of goes back to game audio again. Game audio is, is huge in Rocket League. It's, it gives you so much information. You can hear this player just barely off in front of you to the left. Boom. You know there's somebody right there ready to 50-50 this ball, save a shot, whatever. So the likelihood of a pre-flip shot here working isn't very high because somebody's gonna be there you know that somebody's gonna be there because you can hear them close to the play and so knowing that somebody's gonna be there going for a pre-flip is giving yourself a very weak challenge like a very weak 50 50 when they do challenge because you're not putting much of your the mass of your car behind the ball right when you go for a pre-flip you're just trying to get a skim touch you're barely hitting the ball and so when he comes to 50 this or save your shot or block it, whatever, he's going to hard win that challenge because you're going for a skim touch while he's going for a 50-50 with all the mass of his car. So just knowing that he's close, I would not commit for the pre-flip shot here. I would instead choose to take a controlled touch to their corner that I can stay on and maintain possession here. Instead of this, realize, okay, I'm just going to play for possession. Going to make a touch that keeps the ball close going up this way. That I can use my boost to stay on the ball and keep possession here. Maybe you make the play slightly slow so that your teammate is able to land and get in position to help you on offense. The play sort of develops from there and what you need to do at that point in time will become apparent. But yeah, it's just small details, small, small details that make the small, small difference that get you from camp three to GC to GC two. Good attempt. I'm fine with that. Oh, that was your chance. <laughs> A little bit of a choke, a little bit of nerves. That was definitely your chance. One second, 
That's the game. I don't remember how you got scored on in most cases. One of them was from you just messing up a uh, aerial play, you know, just completely whiffing the ball for whatever reason. Another one was like you accidentally bumped your teammate at midfield when he was coming to challenge and you were going to rotate back. I don't remember what the third was. Uh, I would say your biggest takeaway from this and your biggest recurring issue that I was noticing was just awareness, overall awareness of what's going on. Like you said, you're picking the game back up after a break, after a pretty long break, I believe you said. And so some of it, you know, might just be experience related. Like I was explaining, I've been playing a lot more lately, so I've been feeling like I'm reading the game a lot faster. And that's just sort of how Rocket League works. The more you play, the faster you get at reading what's going on and what's going to happen. So you might just need to Stick with it for a little longer. You'll start picking up on what's going on faster. Just like anybody at any rank. The more you play, the more you'll recognize every situation. Like I'm at the point now, pretty much for me, where up to Grand Champ 3, right? I'm not, I haven't been ever top 100 or professional. I'm sure there's a lot of situations at the top that I've never seen before. But within my rank, within... GC2, GC3, I've seen like everything that could possibly happen so many times that I just recognize everything as soon as it's happening. And when you get to that point, you just react obviously a lot quicker because you know what's going to happen before it even happens. So yeah, stick with it. You'll build up that memory bank, that memory storage of different situations and what's going to happen. That goes for anybody watching. That's just how Rocket League works. It's a very experience-driven game. A um, couple of mechanical mishaps, whatever. A couple of times, like you said, like you pointed out, boost management wasn't the best or decision-making on rotation all the way back for boost instead of maintaining our pressure at midfield on pads or not boost starving our opponent from boost. Things like that. I hope you found this useful. This is pretty long, almost up to an hour recording. Probably made a couple cuts here and there. So this is probably around a 50 minute video. You found it useful and you've made it to the end of this long video. Let's start with that. If you made it to the end of this long video, I appreciate you. Put a comment down below. Secret code word letting me know that you made it to the end of the video. Shalom. Shalom. Work the word shalom in your comment. If you've made it to the end of the video and you're seeing this and i know that you you're a real one for making it all the way to this one the end of this one because it's long if you learn anything along the way leave a like on the video uh, along with your comments that does a, a lot for boosting the video and the algorithm i will really appreciate that uh, i'm trying to make these videos a bit more often than i had been i fell off for a while but i'm trying to trying to get back to it so subscribe for more content coming in the future guys and i'll see you in the next video Thank you so much. Peace.